Last week, Transworld Sport travelled to the Argentinian city of Ushuaia to join up with the competitors of the last desert race. One of the world's hardest ultramarathon events, the race is part of the Four Desert Series and takes place on the beautiful and inhospitable terrain of Antarctica. Departing from Ushuaia, the competitors will spend two days crossing the notorious Drake's Passage before racing in a number of different locations around the Antarctic Peninsula, returning to port ten days later. We followed them as they made their final preparations and boarded the ship. After a celebratory toast, the journey is underway. Named after the 16th century Englishman Francis Drake, the Drake Passage is a thousand kilometers of open ocean between Argentina and Antarctica. With no land mass to impede the low pressure systems that circle the continent, the crossing is renowned for being very unpredictable. Rough seas are known as the Drake Shake, while calm ones are referred to as the Drake Lake. Fortunately for the competitors, it's the latter that greets them on the way to Antarctica. Unlike the other events in the series where the athletes have limited downtime prior to the start, here they have two days with the birds of the Southern Ocean to try and remain focused. That's kind of the hard part, you know, we've all been training and planning for months and now there's kind of this lull before the storm. So, you know, I come up here half a dozen, ten times of the day and I do push-ups, I run around the deck, anything to kind of burn off a little bit of nervous energy, uh, waiting till we get to shore. With cabin fever a real possibility, Mark Jaggett and his fellow competitors try to keep themselves occupied ahead of the race in a variety of ways. <laughs> Attempting to become the first runner to win all four desert events, South Africa's Ryan Sands is the pre-race favourite. I'm still feeling quite relaxed. I think they obviously are a bit of nerves, especially when they gave us the course briefing this morning for the first stage. You kind of realise it's down to the business time now. Uh, less than 12 hours to go until we start the, the first stage. So, yeah, really excited about that, but also not too sure what to expect. So, yeah, there's kind of, yeah, a bit of kind of, obviously, a lot of excitement, but then also kind of a bit of fear, I suppose. You're just not quite sure what's out there. 48 hours after departing Ushuaia, the competitors finally arrive at their first destination, King George Island. Known as the unofficial capital of Antarctica due to the large concentration of scientific bases in close proximity to each other, it's home to a number of chinstrap and gentoo penguin colonies. After high winds delay the start of the first day, racing gets underway next to the Bellingshausen base, named after the Russian officer who first sighted the continent in 1820. In the other three races, each stage is a set distance. In the last desert, however, this format has changed. Due to safety concerns and to lessen the race's impact on the Antarctic environment, the course sees the competitors attempting to complete as many loops as possible of a 14-kilometer circuit in a set time frame. Running between the Uruguayan and Chinese bases set to the east and west of Maxwell Bay, the course offers a variety of track conditions, including snow, mud and melting ice. But with the sunshine helping to raise the temperature, the competitors are all in good humor. This is where my mother-in-law was born several centuries ago, when Beelzebub ruled the earth. I'm just kidding, mother -in -law. Held every two years, the previous edition of the last desert was beset by bad weather, with a total of only 20 kilometers of the race actually being completed. This year's event, however, doesn't suffer the same fate, as Ryan Sands covers 90 kilometers in the allotted 10-hour time frame. Well, I wasn't feeling the strongest. 
strongly to have felt today, but um, I think the conditions were quite tough. I always thought running in sand was hard, but I think snow might be even tougher. Just you're just going your feet are always sinking all over the place, and every now and again, and you sink like right down up to your kind of waist almost, just in kind of water. So that was difficult. But all in all, yeah, if I could have, if you had offered me the day today, or the day like today. Yesterday or well, the first thing this morning I probably would have taken it, so yeah, quite chuffed. For most of the competitors, the end of day one offers time to reflect on where they are and what they're attempting to achieve. I think it's really humbling. I think you have to remind yourself a little bit about the people that went before us here. You know, there's some amazing, amazing names and, and amazing things that have been done down here. You know, whether it's uh, Amundsen or Scott or... De Gerlach or you know the, the 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 list goes on Shackleton um, you know and so as you start to get a little bit cold your feet start to get a little bit wet um, you know you you think back and you in, in some ways I guess you you know you have to show those guys a, a debt of honor and in, in that uh, you know what they went through is is uh, geez uh, far and away more than what we'll ever uh, go through out here Unfortunately, the stage also sees the first casualties of the harsh conditions as two competitors, including Mark Jaggett, pull out of the race due to medical reasons. My Gore-Tex shoes weren't working as well as I'd hoped, and unfortunately my feet got wet. I managed to tick off about three laps in five and a half hours, which is a pretty good clip, but my feet were slowly freezing. And I even spent 20, 25 minutes changing socks a couple of times and still managed to put in, you know, quite a good uh, distance. But I got to the point where my feet were so cold I could no longer you know, safely run with them. Day two sees the competitors return to King George Island with the stage following the same route as the previous day. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Unlike the previous day's favorable conditions, the runners aren't as fortunate on day two. High winds bring the stage to a premature end, forcing them back to the ship. Despite it clearing later in the day, the organizers decide to forego the idea of the stage resuming and instead decide to travel to the race's next location. Next week, the competitors continue their bid to finish the last desert race on Antarctica's frozen landscape.